So okay, by the time, till the time we wait for Vivek to join in, let me just uh, do a round of an introduction of this esteemed panelist today. Maybe set a bit of a context of this topic while the topic is all about unlocking some synergies between uh, linear TV and CTV, right, which is non-linear. Just to give you a sense to this whole audience, we're talking about a 200, roughly a 200 million TV household. And there's a CTV household of roughly about 45 million. There'll be too many reports, but I'm just taking some rough estimates. Uh, and CTV, when you look at CTV as an audience, you've got cord cutters who are not watching the linear TV, and there'll be cord shavers who may be watching both of them. So that's the kind of audience spectrum we have today. And on the other side of it, if you look at uh, addicts, uh, last year probably television was about 32,000 crore, and uh, CTV, which is a very, very small portion of the digital addicts, is probably even less than 2% or, for that matter, less than 3% of the actual overall TV addicts. So that's the starting difference. But to give you a sense, CTV is one of the fastest growing, significantly growing uh, platform today. Most of the households that you see probably are switching more on CTV. And we here to find out whether what are the, what are the synergies that we can have between these two big mediums. Of course, it's all television at the end of the day, which is linear and digital coming in. On this panel today, we have Sid. Sid is a country head of MIQ. MIQ is one of the biggest data company uh, uh, they are global companies, actually. We've got Tushar. Tushar heads uh, Bislari Marketing, and Ankit Desai from Marico. Uh, we'll wait for Vivek till he comes in, but in the meanwhile, in the interest of time, maybe we'll just start from here, right? All right. So I'm going to start from you, Ankit. And uh, you've been one of the largest television advertiser as well as digital advertiser. You've You've probably been doing a lot of investments in most of the mediums, right? And you've got a spectrum of learnings on your table. Give me a sense. Look, I think there are two things that I need to understand more from you. You've, you've used TV+, Plus. you do TV, television, and digital at the same lens. Uh, okay, I've got Vivek there. Vivek, can you please join here? Ladies and gentlemen, please give him a round of applause. Thanks for coming in on time. Oh, so, so what's the story? He's, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll tell you the story a little bit. <laughs> so give me a sense. Uh, spill for FMCG always works on television. And there's sharp targeting or a micro segmenting which works on digital. Right? There's no right or wrong. What's working harder for you? And when? how do you really uh, measure as in what's a hard working angle for you? when it comes to whatever market share movement? So I'll get to share movement a bit later. I think um, that's the crux of everything, right? So we'll leave that for a little later. But fundamentally, I think um, let's take a step back and look at first media metrics, right? And, and look for any large mass business. It's finally about growing penetration or growing share, right? In both cases, you will need to find newer audiences all the time. Now, True. the fact of the matter is that today, in today's day and age, we know that consumers, and you touched on it briefly when you said there are cord cutters and cord shavers, that's a fancy way of saying that there are some people who are not seeing TV anymore, and I need to reach them using digital. However, on digital, if I have an option of going to a larger screen format, which is more impactful, and getting that incremental reach, that's a better place for me to be. So simplistically for me, I think that's the opening segment, right? To say that first, can I look at reach incrementality, which is absolutely medium neutral. Uh, and from there, then once that happens, I actually choose options that are more impactful for me uh, in terms of the screen size per se, right? Uh, and now, I think we have multiple studies, more needs to be done, but we do know that large screen sizes still matter. So while there is a lean-in, which we talk about for mob mobile phones, there is this element of large screen impact leading to association with, with the brand and its scale as well, right? Um, so all of these factors put together, 
I think is the way forward and that's the way we look at it. I think we've now almost put an algorithm to it yeah. uh, which guides us on our journey of making these choices. So broadly that's where we are. Thanks, thanks Uncle, well said. I'm going to come to you Tushar. Uh, just taking off from the same question, I'm just going to give it a little bit of different direction. Uh, all mediums are important, consumers are omnipresent, screen doesn't matter, 6 inch, 52 inch, whatever, right? They're all watching all these screens. Whenever you start investing into marketing, uh, do you have some sort of a formula which says that I want to put 30% on the CTV audiences and I want to put 60% on or maybe 70% on our linear TV audiences? Is there, is there some kind of a formula or is there some kind of a media mix that you guys plan to operate at or whatever operate at? Thanks, thanks for the question. So I'm going to take a very simplistic approach to this. This is every, uh, we've just been through our uh, annual plans, right? And this is a question which every CMO has asked that, how is your media mixed? Uh, I also hate sales, so I have to answer myself, <laughs> right? So basically when you look at uh, the fragmentation of media, especially in the post-pandemic world, you know, if you were earlier uh, looking at a mass FMCG brand, uh, no-brainer would be I need to hit my, uh, you know, GRP targets from a competition SOB perspective. But since then, uh, a lot has moved. Digital has come into fray, right? And digital is almost 30, 35% of uh, every FMCG's uh, so-called ATL spends, as we call it, right? Now, where does connected TV play over here? Uh, if you would look to address a campaign which is very, very mass in nature, where you're targeting GRPs, uh, unfortunately, connected TVs would never give you the result, right? Connected TV is, in fact, playing in the digital media mix, where you're investing on YouTube, or you're investing um, in any other digital channel where you're looking at your OTT spend, right? That is where connected TV comes and plays a part. So you evaluate it versus your overall digital spend rather than with linear TV, right? Now, what also happens in specific cases, like for example, if you want to, uh, let's say, advertise on IPL, then of course you're looking for mass, then you will go for TV. But if you want Wimbledon, for example, Wimbledon is a very urban uh, specific uh, phenomenon, then connected TV is a no-brainer. You put your mix to connected TV and uh, especially if you have a premium audience uh, link campaign uh, there. That's one part. The uh, other part you have to look at uh, from a broad-based strategy is the uh, metrics as far as ROI is concerned. Sorry. So far, the OTT domain has, is, is not as advanced in terms of metrics uh, to measure ROI in specific. And in connected TV, in the past, we've had problems with frequency, especially if you're buying a CPM basis. Right. But nowadays, uh, things are evolving. I think Park is coming into connected TV. There are uh, spot sales also happening in connected TV. Also, to note the fact that there's a 30% growth in broadband connection and a 30% growth in connected TV sales as such. So, from an urban uh, centric phenomenon, connected TV will become more and more important part of, part of the media mix for, media mix for any market. Well said. I think you're spelling out all the strategies. I'm very happy with that. Anyway, uh, on, that, on that note, I'm going to move to Sid uh, and I'm going to ask him, well, we've heard a lot of stories about the linear side and, and there's, a, there's a data that comes in which is more like about data that's an input. We try and get an output and overlay some sort of a data coming in. In today's world, data has become very important and every consumer signal, which is where my question was, lastly, from a broad spectrum, a spill versus a micro segment. You guys have mastered in some of the signals that you pick up from the consumers and uh, and overlay on top of it to make it, you know, sharper, as sharper as it can get. And somewhere leading to a personalization at scale also, right? I mean, if I'm not wrong. Maybe, I don't know the scale today right now with whatever, 40, 45, 50 million basis. But going forward, of course, it's going to be very imperative for every marketer to make sure that there's a data signal coming in. Why don't you just give us some, some sense on some of probably beautiful campaigns that you would have done and how is it impacted and made a difference to that brand by using signals? Yeah, uh, so uh, I think <clears throat> very well said by uh, both Tushar and Amrit in terms of what the state of the uh, market is in terms of CTV and you also talked about. Uh, so we also have a global view, right? So we are present in 30 plus countries and what we have seen 
is that uh, globally CTV has been prevalent for a longer time in many countries, uh, especially uh, countries like US, UK, etc. And there, uh, one of the big number which we have seen is that we have an intelligence hub, uh, which is basic. We have a huge number of data partnerships around the world and we have a huge data lake. And then all those insights, consumer insights for a particular brand also get surfaced in an intelligence hub. And there, uh, we also collect a lot of data on TV, connected TV. That what are consumers uh, consuming connected TV, are they consuming linear TV, all that data also we consume uh, and we show that in the intelligence hub. And in those markets, what we are seeing is that three, four years back, 70% uh, you know, uh, viewership would be on linear TV and 30% on connected TV for even FMCG brands. But now it is completely reversed. So it is 70% on connected TV and 30% on linear TV. So uh, in a way, we will be replicating the same trend going forward. Uh, so that is something which uh, I think Tushar also talked about that the number of connected TV is going to increase. It is right now an urban phenomenon. But very quickly, obviously, because the data costs are low in India overall as well. You are in rural markets also, and this, you know, that penetration will happen. Uh, right? It sure. might take some time, but it will happen. Sure. So that is one, one big anchor. And in terms of uh, what we have done in India is like, you know, the premium brand. Like, for example, we have a case study with Caritland, where, uh, you know, if you want to reach out to urban premium affluent audiences, there is a, you know, Shatitya is coming as well. Is an offer going on, so you watch the offer on TV as well. You get the visual on TV. It's a big screen. It has that impact. And then we are also able to retarget the mobiles in the household. So that if you want to take advantage of that coupon code and buy something online because you don't have time to go to the store or whichever way, or you know you might engage more on mobile. You might like some designs, and then you might go to the store as well. Whichever way, there is a full funnel which is created. Of course, uh, you know, it's a premium brand, so it's not like a mass brand we are talking about here. But uh, as we go along, uh, you know, with 45 million households, the numbers are going to increase. So I think uh, a large part of mass market also will get covered in a couple of years or three years. Well said, especially the last point. It may be quite urban premium today, but as it grows, it's, it's going to be spreading across everywhere. Yeah. I'm Move to you, Vivek. I'm sorry to pull you in at the last minute. By the way, the topic is. By the way, he doesn't know the topic. I just pulled him in. <laughs> it's about the synergies between linear and CTV, and nothing better than you, uh, who runs such a big show uh, at, uh, at India Today, right? Give me a sense of how are brands. I mean, you have your own CTV channel. You have your live news channel on YouTube, right? Where consumers are consuming and brands are advertising, and you also look after the linear TV part as a business. Tushar gave us a sense of mass versus, you know, premium and all that stuff. We've all spoken about all these things. Do you, as a publisher, do you get the same sense? Or do you agree? Uh, I, I don't have a sense. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I think uh, so thanks, Tushar, for all those compliments. I think they make up for the last minute. Right. Yeah. Am I audible? So it's a very interesting space uh, as as, uh, I, as as a group that works across uh, formats of uh, broadcast and uh, digital and you know CTV. What we're actually seeing is that it's not uh, you know really uh, the audience not looking at it like TV as a segment and CTV as a segment. It's it's more like you know TV transforming into CTV is. Is, is, is the closest we can get to explaining a trend or a shift like this. And therefore what we're seeing is all these all these phenomena that all our friends are talking about that uh, you you look at some light TV viewers and try to catch them on CTV or uh, look at an urban phenomena uh, versus uh, not yet so much rural. Now these are all sort of, uh, when you look at it from a production point of view or from somebody who is serving audiences that are different, you are actually seeing that maybe it's, it's the TV audience which is not moved out of TV, but maybe it's the watch time that's getting spread. Because now there was a point in time where 
say two years back, three years back, or pre-COVID, uh, say a concurrent feed on YouTube of a live stream would have very different prime time, or it would even be an all-day prime time. And TV would have a very specific uh, prime time starting, say six onwards on rural and seven onwards on urban. But what we have now seen is that these patterns and these behaviors and these uh, uh, sort of uh, consumption timings are more or less mirroring, which sort of says that you know it indicates in a way, or you can easily derive that it's largely the same consumption habit when they're consuming life. It's largely the same audience, but it's it's the dispersion of watch time for the majority of it has got divided between CTV and linear TV. I mean, that, that to us is the way that is working right now. So from a brand side, see, uh, you have, from a brand side, you have short form video and you have long form video. So there is a, there is a certain, uh, so while you have Lalan Talk as a brand, you'll have the reels running on, uh, uh, you know, shorter formats. But CTV <coughs> is actually giving you that consumer which is still into long format consumption. So when you're looking at a brand, you're sending message through the content. So there is some message that you want to send just to increase reach so that you are fighting the attention economy. The other is where you are actually sort of not just transacting with him but really building a stronger bond where you are going deep with him. That's what comes through CTV because it works with the same mean back attentive behavior that works on TV and the brand messaging therefore there is far more closer and you can actually in depth talk. Thanks, uh, thanks Vivek. I'm, I'm, you know, that's led to another question. I'm going to ask uh, you, uh, Ankit and Tushar, both of you. He spoke about the long format and the short format. Now, from a communication or a messaging strategy point of view, would you still have your 20-second asset which runs on television, run on CTV? Would you do a different cut for different audiences coming in, right? I mean. Do you have a perspective, any point of view on that? Can you can you spell a few of your strategies? Sure. So, look, I think uh, this whole, you know, these days I, I see a lot of people vilifying the television ad, right? Saying that, uh, you know, it's one ad that you run for everyone. But if you take a step back, actually that ad has been made for a certain everyone, right? That appeals to the proposition that it's the brand mentioned. So I think one needs to be cognizant of that. In this, and you know, I might get a lot of breakbacks for saying this, to say that in this day of personalization, um, we've gone a bit too overboard and started slicing too narrow. Right? Um, maybe you don't really need to slice that narrow. Right? Now, not for a moment am I saying that one shouldn't cater to the context that the consumer is in. Um, but there are ways to do that within the framework that one operates in as a brand. Now, and if I take the example that you spoke about of short form versus long form, um, and map it back to the consumer context in which they consume their content, right? Uh, short form content is typically travel content, snacky content that you're using as a filler for your time versus long form content which is ideally uh, you know more laid back but also engaged also oriented right and therefore has a lot more value when you're trying hard to pitch a brand proposition on that right so one will have to play around with these contexts with these realities that the consumer lives with and try and figure a way for the brand to come alive within all of them in different ways now Therefore, coming back to the question, is there a way or is there a simple answer to say, does my TBC run on TV and CTV or digital? Yes, it does, right? Because it's the best asset that I have that can make my proposition stand out and build that awareness to consideration to travel funnel that I'm trying so hard to build as a brand. But at the same time, I think we now have the opportunity to go beyond that. And, and that's the space that we as brands need to explore a lot more. That we are now moving towards. Tushar, do you agree with that? I'll go a little more broad-based here. If I ask uh, everyone that what do you watch on connected TV, 
right? Um, uh, there are two specific sets. One is, of course, you watch uh, OTTs, and the second, you consume YouTube, maybe, or not. Now, when we look at OTTs, the top two OTTs, Netflix and Prime, do not ad advertise at all, right? So that slices your audience to a limited number, right? And then what comes into fray? Sports become one of the biggest advertising medium for any advertiser when it comes to connected TV then. Or, or YouTube, which is basically programmatic buy, but you can slice it into connected and uh, mobile TV as well. So I think the inflection point in the industry will actually come when Netflix and Prime allow advertising. I think that's going to be one point where advertisers are going to say, hey, here is uh, you know a medium which is giving you that broad reach because a lot of the content time would be spent on Netflix, especially for long format content. From a sports perspective, I think it's a judicious mix, especially if you have an urban-centric audience and you can have customization and personalization where you can actually drill down to pin codes. Like if I have a problem in Bangalore city, for example, right? I want to address that and I only want to go to the Bangalore city audience. I know there are 30% cord cutters over there, right? I will advertise on sports during the IPL on connected TV in Bangalore city. That is a specific problem which solves for me. So that's an important part. Uh, YouTube, on the other hand, when I look at it, uh, I think uh, it's part of every marketer's mix today, right? And uh, uh, both uh, connected and mobile plays an equal important part as far as that is concerned. But if I were to further slice it uh, down and talk about Gen Z's or Young India, they are more on mobile. So connected TV actually uh, has to be a very judicious investment from any marketer's perspective. Otherwise, the other problem you will face, especially when you're going non-sports, you will have the frequency of 10 on the same day to any consumer on a household, which I've personally seen myself, where I've seen the same ad 10 times. Yeah, and that's damn irritating at times, yeah. I agree with you, absolutely well said. You know, he made a point about the pin code level targeting and, and how sharp shooting that you can do onto your micro segmentation of audiences and all. Uh, you've, you've done quite a few campaigns uh, related to uh, these kind of things. Give me a perspective on the same targeting level with, with communication as a context. So would you probably use a long format across everyone or would you going to do a specialized communication for a specialized household? Yeah. <clears throat> so for example, we have a very interesting case study. There was a brand which was launching an EV. And uh, so what we did was we synced the petrol prices in every city where they are launching that product. And that petrol price is obviously changing every day in every city, and every city has a different petrol price. So creative is dynamic creative. It is saying that you know if you buy this EV, today's petrol price is this much, and in a year you will save so much. And that time and place and that dynamic creative, uh, you know, is can be done on connected TV as well, which you have done in many campaigns because it's a digital medium at the end of the day. So innovations like these, where we are personalizing and we are and that time, petrol price was really high. So it was also a topic of a lot of discussions as well. So it was a very timely launch. And you know that communication played a very, very good role in that uh, time period. Another example is uh, we have a case study with Jaguar Land Rover, where what we are doing is we are uh, integrating the data of all their dealerships of you know, what is the inventory of their cars in each dealership and what is the sale going on. And that, that is getting updated on a regular basis, on an everyday basis. right? And it's, a, it's about problem solving. It is, you know, as digitization will happen, it is not about only media. It is about how do you holistically solve your problem. So for those dealerships where inventory is high and uh, sales is low, there, you know, I would increase the intensity and I would do that personalization and localization. As he said, in Bangalore, I will focus more on connected TV because that's where I'll find 30% cord cutters. Similarly, in those dealerships or those areas where inventory is high, sales is low, I will drive more footfalls. So. It's about business problem solving by because all the data is going to get digital and you're going to get it integrated and then you can use connected TV, you can use mobile, whichever is the right digital medium by which you are able to solve the business problem for the brand. So Thanks. that is where we are looking at things. Well, well said, well said, said. Vivek, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to ask you, uh, as a publisher, right, you, you have, you sit on your, you create your own content, you have your own platforms. Marketeers, on the one hand, are thinking in an innovative way of really putting up their brand, uh, whether it's micro-segmenting, whether it's long-form, short-form, whatever. 
as a publisher, what is your what are the your areas of innovation that you guys are thinking in terms of solution for the brands? So this relates specifically to CTV. Yeah. Both uh, make it linear and C because the discussion is all about uh, CTV and linear TV. You can use this one. See, increasingly, uh, all the problems uh, revolve around data now. I think data has become one of the foremost tools uh, that uh, are employed today on problem solving, whether it's an FMCG major or it is, say, uh, more and more auto sales happening in the SUV segment, and then you're trying to sell the second car. And therefore, there is no way that a publisher uh, can can service uh, a client on an agency or a brief like that without giving data. So topmost uh, priority for us will always be to first uh, collect data which is sizable because, uh, and then enrich it. So it's not the other way around that you have, you know, very small data pool and it is very enriched and you give it to somebody. But you have large amounts of data, and we do it through, uh, you know, various forms. So uh, to help, for example, Ankit or to help Tushar, uh, what we would do is, uh, uh, you know, maybe some part of uh, magazine gets converted into uh, video, and then that goes behind a paywall. So paywall, uh, for example, is a very, uh, or say an ad light model for one of my streams. So I have stream one stream running for election, another stream running for and at the same time, there are a million events happening. And a few streams go behind the paywall, and then you realize that people are willing to pay for this stream, and then you start collecting data, and then you start sort of uh, enriching this data by asking for more and more information. The other thing that I think uh, really, from a publisher perspective, uh, and we in India have not been able to sort of advance it so fast, and, and uh, I mean, the world is far ahead, is contextual targeting. So I think we still stuck on some demographics, behavioral at best, and we, we want more deterministic tools. But I think, you know, the best way to uh, assess your audience is, is by assessing the content the person or the individual is consuming. And I think uh, the publisher has to really do that hard work to make context and then con people consuming that context into a cohort, which then is relevant to the advertiser. So you couple that context, add to that some enriched data, and then give it to them for targeting. I, I think that's, that's really the way that we'll all move together. Nice. So your answer is data. Data is your innovative solutions. Yeah. Uh, you, Ankit and Tushar, like the way how the industry is moving right now, it's imperative that everyone's collecting the first party data. It's important for everyone so that when cookie deprecates, uh, you don't have to be dependent on one giant who's going to offer you this retargeting. Keeping this in mind that data is going to be important and, well, you're going to be present on linear TV as well. You've got to be present both. How smartly are you using data for your campaigns so that you're seeing, you're, you're, you're filling up, you're doing a tick mark on your reach in frequencies, whatever impact impacts and then are you using the smart data to make sure that uh, you know they're retargeted or any specific offers that have been given to these particular consumers do you have a perspective on this no sure so um, do we do this yes do we do it enough maybe not really okay um, but yes I think the promise is there um, today there is enough that we get in terms of intent from the consumer, right? And uh, the question is, are we able to capture that intent and then move it back into the attribution funnel to ensure that it's making our investment work harder, right? Um, now, we can all be at various levels on where we are on that continuum. Um, for us, I would rate that we are still at a beginning phase, right? But um, I think, the point is absolutely relevant. Uh, is it something that we are looking at? Yes, definitely something that we are focused on. And does it have potential? Yes, it has demonstrated potential. Because if you are able to correctly capture that intent and move it back into talking to that consumer, giving them a reason to reassess their decision making, 
you're sure to see a far better return on your investment down the funnel. So, um, yeah, that's definitely something that we are looking at. Well said. Tushar, how do you use data smartly for your campaigns? So, um, I mean, uh, we have a D2C app as well, where uh, performance marketing, of course, plays a big part in terms of customer acquisition cost and all. Uh, if I were to talk about connected TV, no, connected TV does not uh, is not a part of my performance marketing plan because there is no interactability over there. Interac interactability is in a mobile or a desktop environment. So, from uh, from a pure play performance play where I performance marketing play where I am looking to induce direct sales, connected TV doesn't play a part. Where connected TV plays a part is in customization because I can have uh, local icon audience is mapped over there. I can have specific campaigns for specific cities running and get a better ROI on there. And another important part is that if you look at regional content today, uh, and especially English content, more of that is available on connected TV or on OTT platforms than on linear TV. Especially if you look at the Tamil space, that is skyrocketed as far as OTT is concerned. So, so if I'm looking to advertise to an audience over there, connected TV will play a more and a more important part especially if I'm looking at Bangalore, Chennai, and Hyderabad, where your uh, mass Bharat campaigns sometimes do not work and you have to rejig your uh, communication over there. If you want to optimize your media spends, I think connected TV in that uh, space and with the data that is available from a local-like audience perspective will play a big part. Nice, nice. Uh, thanks, thanks. I think very, very, very interesting perspective uh, that's coming out from your... Uh, Again, I want to ask you one question. How then you measure, or probably how do you do this kind of a right attribution of uh, what's leading to the market share gain, maybe uh, moving needles in particular uh, markets or whatever you want to call it? Is there, is there a method to this manner, or, or is it just about do a cross media study, which I got result, See, I mean, all of us do our funnel studies from a brand perspective in uh, terms of, you know, how the brand share is more, what is your top of mind recall, what is your attribution in terms of preferences. Those studies are done any which ways. Attribution to a specific media vehicle, we do that attribution study as well, where have you seen my ad? That also happens. But uh, from a pure play uh, uh, perspective as far as measuring ROI, today is an integrated marketing world. One channel uh, is not playing a part. There are There is TV, there is digital, there is connected TV, there is uh, trade marketing, there is uh, experiences which have come back with a bang. So from a marketer's perspective, you have to spread your pool, especially, and, and make sure that the message grows across each channel. Uh, gone are the days where GRP and SOV of TV is the only measure. Uh, there is no, unfortunately, there is no integrated uh, score which comes back to us saying that, you know, you've got this much in TV, this much in digital. You have an, you have an idea that I've reached so many audiences or I've reached so many eyeballs, but there is no common metric which comes on. Where a marketer can play a part is have a higher share in a medium which is more ROI positive. To get that same share on TV, for example, you will have to spend infinitely more then getting that same share on, let's say, connected TV, if I want to go to Sony Live and look at what am I doing at KBC, for example. So that's where you have to be smart in your spend. Yeah, well said. In fact, uh, I'd like to add more on what Tushar said. In one of our uh, clients' campaigns, uh, we kept television investments as constant, and we kept shifting the digital investments, which was 60% on mobile and 40% on CTV. Three months later, four months later, we moved 80% on CTV and just about 20% on mobile. Today, we are 100% on CTV, and we can see the shift on the market share spend, market share uh, sales, right? So I think some of the experiments that we all as marketers, uh, agency guys do, and probably try and find some meat out of it. But that leads, you know, you made an interesting point. Uh, consumers, uh, trade, marketing, and everyone you have to reach out to, right? I remember Vivek, we were having one conversation one day, and you know, a great friend of mine, he said, Yeah, dunya badal gayi hai. Ye jo trade wale na, TV nahi dekhte hai. Wo mobile aise rakhte hai, aur connect, aur mobile pe dekhte hai TV. Do you remember this? Right? And you, I'm sure, you've done some studies to figure out how is the trade consuming your own content. Why don't you give us a little bit of a perspective of what's the shift that's happening even in trade? 
So that conversation is amongst the very few times that Vishal's ever given me time. So yes, uh, he definitely does remember because it's one of two occasions that he's ever allowed me to meet him. In. Uh, but yeah, on a serious note, I think uh, uh, we've become uh, sort of screen independent. And uh, as a country, we're very obsessed with live events. We, we like to see events unfolding. We, so it's not something that, you know, if I miss today in the afternoon and I go back and as VOD look at relaxed viewing of that, it's something I want to know because that moment's not going to come back again. I want to watch it there and then. And genuinely, uh, uh, you know, infrastructures now allowed you to uh, be in touch with a cricket match, with uh, a breaking news, uh, with, uh, with a choice of whatever you want to watch, in which language you want to watch. And therefore, uh, we've, we've seen that in a lot more places, the big screens getting replaced by, by the small screen. But having said that, uh, there, uh, the content's also moving on to CTV on a lot of places. And it's, it's really uh, something that sometimes we don't factor in because like, like we're saying, you know, it's bit somewhere between 25 to 45 million households. But very important factor there is co-viewing because when you're actually on out of home and, uh, you know, say, I mean, now we have channels that play war all day, but suppose there is war at some point and you know there is some bombing happening there are 10 to 20 people so you can actually look at a multiple of that happening at the OH space at dealers at distributors at places at nursing homes and uh, places like these so a lot of this is now moving from say a, a cable to a uh, to a sort of connected devices kind of format so that's one big change and that's why you know we were having this discussion that you know, it's, it's not just, uh, you know, what you're looking at, at the end consumer. CTV is now also doing a lot of play that TV initially was doing. So it's not just the bottom of the funnel performance marketing that a lot of people do uh, on digital, but it's actually reinvesting in a way into your top of funnel exactly the way that TV does. So I think co-viewing and the fact that it plays also top of the funnel uh, role in a media plan are two big strengths that CTV has that the other models perhaps don't match. Thank you. Thank you for throwing some more light on that. Uh, we've got just about a few minutes left, uh, and I want to just go around this panel and ask a question. Uh, CTV, linear TV, or both? Definitely both. Yeah. What about you, Dushar? Both, provided that the CTV rates suddenly don't jack up to the linear TV rate, then it becomes another <laughs> thing altogether. <laughs> Happened during the IPL. <laughs> so, okay, coming back to the same question, efficiencies, CTV, linear TV. Uh, from a efficiency perspective, it, it depends upon the objective. of If I want a mass Bharat campaign, I'm going to go TV, for sure. But if I'm looking at an urban centric, I, so, I mean, if cord cutters are 30% today and 60% five years later, then obviously from an urban phenomenon, CTV is the only way to go. Well said. Sid, CTV, CTV, CTV. That's the only three things you're going to say, right? <laughs> no, no. I, I've grown uh, watching linear TV. I love linear TV, so both. Okay, great. <laughs> From a revenue perspective, Vivek, what do you think, uh, how is the world going to look like in a few years? CTV, linear TV. So I, 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 I'd say it would be linear TV supplemented with CTV because I think you guys will always pay me more for linear TV. You have a, so we, in any case, see signals of uh, rate depression happening for CTV. So I, I think it will be linear TV on the revenue side because firstly, you trade in effective rates. I mean, that's, that's a very big difference between how you trade on the digital side of things and how you, so on effective rate, there are many things like perception, there are things like loyalty, there are repeat usage and you know, things like that. Whereas, you know, if you're actually in the CPM war, then you really, I mean, you're not talking quality CPM. So till we reach HQ CPM, which is high quality CPM, I think it's going to be linear TV supplemented with CTV. Well said, Vivek. On that note, thank you very much. Uh, and the verdict is out. It's both, actually. I'm not going to take one side for that. <laughs> thank you, everyone.
Uh, any questions? Do you guys have any questions? Yes? Right here. Yeah, my name is Vishal. I'm an uh, innovator so, and I'm associated with the world, world largest CCTV producer, it's a BOI actually. And, uh, Sorry, you're not audible. My name is Vishal and I'm an innovator and I'm associated with the world largest uh, CTV manufacturer, BOI actually, where I associate with them to address the solution where we implement the, you know, CTV at the CCTV at the society. So half of the area is show the CCTV display and half of the content advertiser to put the so it can be subsidized uh, you know cctv implement in the society so i want to ask the question like if if the ctv has a provision to have a divide into the screen for the two side or four side actually you know because it's a possibility is a technology side actually you know where you because uh, as you see that now right content comes so how the market adopt actually you know as a consumer actually you know so what kind of as a consumer or as a marketer Marketer, entire ecosystem as a consumer, uh, you know, as a entire ecosystem is if you have a 50 inch screen CTV at your home or 55 inch actually, because now the price is reduced by 25,000, you can get the 50 inch TV and divide into the I, I can give you a quick answer in the interest of time. Years back, there was a TV called as PIP, picture in picture. It failed. As a marketer, do you have a perspective? Yeah, no, I think. Um, what we are also seeing is that we are moving away from the concept of just reach and frequency into actually trying to measure attention, right? And this is actually going to be contra to exactly that concept. So when you pay marketing dollars, you pay for the attention of the viewer who's seeing that message, and you want it to be focused straight on that message, right? Not split fragmented across five mini screens. So yeah. I mean, the quick answer to this be, will be like 10, 15 years back when we were all growing up, uh, this was something which was interesting because we all didn't have mobile phones with us. Today, you're not a captive. The family doesn't have to watch the same thing. If you don't like something going on TV, you can go on your mobile and you can consume any content. So I don't think so. This will really play a part at all. All right. Thank you on that note. Thank you very much, panelists. Uh, thanks. Yes. It's